and recording, and then let me put your agenda up. Hold on. There you go. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, calling in. I'd like to call the meeting to order and the roll call uh, attendees are Chris Shipper here, uh, Cam here, Linda here. Got it. And um, I think Marty will try to join us, but he's not on at the moment, nor is Susan Schweitzer. But we have three of us here, so the meeting can be called to order. Uh, First order of business is to approve the minutes of May 14th, which are a, uh, I think you've had a chance to look at them. They are a subset of our agenda uh, with uh, bullet points filled in. Uh, can right. I get a uh, motion? I move to approve the uh, minutes of May 14th. Second. Uh, Cam, you want a second? Yep, sec uh, sorry, second. Okay, minutes approved. Thank you. All right. Um, first item on the agenda relates to sustainable New Canaan. And uh, Robin has shared with me a few uh, updates on it, but I'd love to hear more and find out um, uh, from Robin how, how we can help and how things are progressing. Hi. All right. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, so we did have a couple weeks ago our first sustainable uh, team meeting. Um, and then I did meet with uh, some of the sustainable Connecticut coaches and went over what we need to do. So I will be um, arranging our next meeting where we'll start. Um, sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Feral cat collection. <laughs> oh, always when I'm about to do something. Um, so we'll, uh, I know, uh, so we'll, uh, I'll arrange our next meeting when we're going to start compiling all the um, information we have now to try to get to that 200 point mark to get to the um, bronze um, certification. So the only updates for Sustainable Connecticut we have right now is we, there is a CPACE program on this Monday, June 15th. Uh, 11 a.m. at the library. It's a Zoom meeting. It's with Nicholas Zumba of Connecticut Green Bank. Uh, town Council did pass the resolution for um, the CPACE program. Sorry, she's back. Um, in 2014, but it's never been used. Um, so Nicholas is coming from Connecticut uh, Green Bank to go over what it's about. So we've reached out to nonprofits and businesses in the area. And the library, of course, has their 9,000 or 10,000 email address. So that will go towards our Sustainable Connecticut application, one that the resolution was passed in 2014, but also that we're doing a program for it. Um, oh, the next is we are having a program with the town on Monday, June 29th, which is called Reducing and Recycling During the Pandemic. It will be with uh, Tiger Man. Mark O'Brien of Oak Ridge Waste and Recycling, which is our new contract in town, as well as Jennifer Heaton-Jones, Executive Director of Housatonic Resources Recovery Authority. Um, so what I would like to bring up is there are a few other programs we could be doing for our Sustainable Connecticut and wondering if the Conservation Commission uh, would possibly be willing, um, as these programs would be for, sorry, um, our, uh, certification is, um, uh, sorry, um, go, uh, looking to do some programs if C Conservation Commission would be willing to um, pay for the speakers. It's usually about a hundred to $200 fee, but we're looking much like the invasive uh, workshop we did on Japanese barberry and ticks. Uh, if we could work with the library if Conservation Commission, I'll probably have to bring it up in your next meeting and put it on the agenda. But if we found speakers, if Conservation Commission would be willing to um, underwrite those speakers. Yes. Okay. It would probably and, and be the... The, the... And I think we can do that in part because we put into the, the upcoming fiscal year budget uh, some monies to support the sustainable CT effort. So yes. Right. 
and these speakers would be a max of two hundred dollars. So it's it's and it's usually just just a donation. Uh, the other thing that came out of that sustainable team meeting was that there is this because we passed the the town passed the resolution for sustainable Connecticut. We now have access to the sustainable matching fund, right? Um, which means organizations in town uh, you can match up to fifteen thousand dollars for a program that uh, fits the criteria, usually helping the community. $25,000 if it's for an energy product project. Um, but these would be organizations. Um, they would need to seek out Connecticut, uh, Sustainable Connecticut matching fund themselves to get the criteria um, approved. And then they would reach out to the sustainability team because the town would help. Uh, but we're just trying to get the word out on that right now. Uh, there was a question at our last meeting, Susan will probably remember this, that we were unsure um, I needed clarification if it was just one project per town. The town can do as many projects, it's per organization. So only Great. one, so, so land trust could only do one program at a time before they completed it, before they started the next. Got it. Um, now, so um, it. Su Susan Schweitzer, I don't think she's on right now, but she has been working on a grant application in that regard. And we've discussed the need for matching funds and, and, you know, there are certain requirements like they will give money, but you have to have at least 20 donors and things like that. So it's not, they, they, they stress this is not a grant. Mm -hmm. um, they stress it's much easier than that. Uh, organizational Milton uh, set something up in less than a week and had it running. Uh, what you do need to do is you need to set something up on a crowd uh, source funding site called IOBI. Right. All donations are tax deductible on this site, and but you would need any project would need at least 20 people to donate towards it. So if one person donates $50, it shows up as 100 online because they it's instantly matched. But if you only have five people that donate towards a project, you have to close it down because the whole thing is it's to get the community involved. That being said, the if let's say Bristow wants to do something and someone from Norwalk, someone from Windsor Locks donates that count mm -hmm. towards it. It doesn't have to be people within New Canaan. Got it. Okay. Uh, I think that's really encouraging. And um, I will try to circle back with Susan and you on what we're uh, putting in for. I think it'll probably be related to Bristow, uh, whether it's invasive management or uh, native plant planting. Um, or uh, improved access, I think we'll be able to, to meet some of the criteria. Okay, and then the, the only thing just to know is it can't be something that's already been put in your budget, in the municipal budget. So if you want to do fencing that's been already put in the budget, you, you couldn't then take it out and put it and do a matching, a matching fund. Right, that, 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 that yeah. works and that makes sense because we've, we've asked the town to do kind of like uh, infrastructure on the park, but the soft work like invasives or planting or, or birding uh, activities um, uh, uh, could work, so. Right, so, okay. All right, um, quick question on pollinator pathway. Um, the, the, the lead for that activity is, is um, not clear to me um, whether it's a, a community project that anyone can jump into or is there a community organization that really wants to drive it? Because I know we did a collective effort, but I don't know where the local leadership lies. So it was originally the local leadership. Um, I can get in touch. It's Mark Fowler at Grace Farms. He was the one that put it together. Um, some organizations have just put stuff together, but there's, there's not a cohesive... Um, Pre, uh, pretty much, I think it's Aaron Leaflin that you would contact if you want to be part of it because he's the one maintaining the map. Right. So I can I can go back to Mark and ask Mark because um, the library. I mean, before COVID hit, the library did was wondering about having a meeting for the pollinator pathway, right. bringing all the groups together. But then this happened. So, um, but it would be Mark Fowler. He was the one who okay. got everyone together in the beginning, and then Aaron Leaflin. Uh, I know Mark, and I, I know Mark, and I know Aaron, so I might reach out to them to learn more. What I what I think is the uh, the objective of something like that would be to help 
residences, and I know there's a town leadership requirement, but to help residential owners to do a kind of biodiversity scorecard on their property to say, this is, you have a beautiful property, but it's 100% lawn. So it has like a biodiversity score of, you know, zero or 10. Whereas if you had some uh, uh, water features or some varied plantings and things like that, you could reach, you know, higher levels. I'm, I'm just wondering, um, that seems to me where the pollinator pathway would get a breakthrough, which is that uh, homes that participate and are rated as high biodiversity or medium or low, and, and our homes that are at low trying to make it to medium or move up is like a scoring or measurement system that would support uh, uh, greater efforts at native plants and biodiversity and, and pollinator plants, which is the goal. Right, I can check with uh, Louise Washer is one of the founders of the pollinator yes. pathway movement. She's in Norwalk. She'll have, she'll have some information on what they're, on what they're doing in other communities too, if there's right. like a scoring. Okay. Part. That that might be something we can um, uh, uh, we can kind of push on as 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 once we get the Bristow project m rolling, we have a little more bandwidth to take on some uh, additional project areas. So uh, that's good. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know uh, Linda or Cam. Did you have some comments? No, oh, sounds good to me. No, I think okay. um, yeah, it's great. All right. Um, just a quick update on uh, New Canaan uh, uh, river water testing. Um, right now, uh, uh, Harbor Watch is in uh, doing uh, Neroten, Ripawam, and Silvermine. Uh, they are not currently testing Five Mile, uh, but the town is testing Five Mile. But we're hopeful that next year uh, Harbor Watch will test all four. And um, two points. One is the, the Conservation Commission uh, made a contribution to the river testing of 2,500, and the Community Foundation made a contribution of 6,000. So uh, the town of New Canaan is supporting this, and, and our goal on the commission is to get the data and put it into a form that can explain to our citizenship the importance of uh, good river management and good uh, property management when you adjoin rivers. So um, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to develop a story there that we can share and that might make people who live along streams or rivers a little more sensitive about what their landscapers do and how they manage their properties. Again, uh, it's a, an area to explore. Any comments regarding that? No. Okay. Um, solar power, I'm, I know it's in, uh, and I haven't gotten any reports yet about how many kilowatt hours or how effective it's been. Obviously we're moving into summertime where it becomes even more effective, but um, I need to figure out how to uh, create a channel to mark where we get information on how many feet of installed uh, uh, solar have we put in place and how much is that generating uh, uh, for us and saving us? So uh, sometimes we do these, we launch these projects, but we never share the information more broadly so that the town itself becomes more aware of solar as an option. So I, I simply bring that up as a to-do and I, I, I keep it on the agenda more like a reminder that we need to tell that story more effectively and, and we're not doing it yet. Chris, can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, is that for, is the solar installations you're referring to, are those town installations, commercial, residential? Those are the, those are the five town installations that are uh, being put, that are, I think, almost complete now. Right, yeah, you should be able to, get, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're aware of those numbers, so. Right, and that's what I'm trying to say is, is it's sort of like they're there and they're sort of not out in the open, and I'd like to generate some public awareness about that, because it's, it's a little bit like we're hiding ourselves down a well on having done this great work at putting in more solar and yet not, not telling the story. Right, and these but, numbers are knowable. They are The knowable. Nature Center was going to host some programs with, Mark, um, 
you know, the, relative to uh, the animal care building. Mm -hmm. But I don't, you know, I think we still plan to. It's just difficult to know how to plan right now. How to okay. plan why yeah, I mean, that's a great example of just being able to mention to people that there's now a solar on the animal on the animal building and it's generating this much electricity for us. Uh, right. And, you know, it's great for the environment and it's a good message. Right. Well, you know, the, it was taken off the grid completely, the animal care building. Wow. So that's impressive. So it's self-standing now, self-sufficient. I think so. I hope so. Last time I checked. <laughs> Got it. I'm sure so, it is. So there must be a battery uh, system there or something that can... Well, you know, we, much... again, we talked to Mark about this and he was going to set up the, the metrics and so that we could have the programs, but everything stopped, you know. You know, I hear does. you. Then. You know, what? once you start to push on that and getting the information out, we can use that as a template to share information on the other buildings as well. Sure, sure. I think the schools know. The schools have the, their numbers, I'm, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a classic case of sharing that so that, I mean, look at all the parents who can learn more about solar and why it's important for us to have it. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, 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 the fourth item, which is on Bristow. I want to just make this a very quick update for everybody on where things stand. Um, the uh, Board of Finance has put it through. I think the Board of Selectmen review it this week from the capital budget and then the town council uh, votes on the final uh, bonding uh, on the 17th. So the, the program has remained intact and uh, Tiger um, has kept it at the top of his list of priorities. And uh, I'm very hopeful that that will, will go through and that we will be able to begin the new fiscal year uh, with a bid package to get that first phase uh, underway. Um, Tom, and I, I don't, say, sorry to jump in. Yes, Tom, I don't have the agenda in front of me, different computer. Um, is it on the agenda for the 17th? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. You do. It's, I think it's bundled into a couple other items as a total of funding, uh, but it's on. Um, uh, just on point B, we were going to get some uh, trees and ferns planted uh, through the Church of Latter-day Saints. They've postponed it and will come back again in September. Uh, the good news also is on May 18th, the Inland Wetlands Commission approved the master plan. Sorry, did someone want to make a comment? All right, I'll continue. Uh, the Inland Wetlands Commission approved the master plan with few uh, easily met conditions, uh, which was great. Um, so we're in pretty good shape for five years. So we will keep the Inland Wetlands Commission updated on our projects. Uh, point D, the town de parks department has done some cleanup work, but we've also now had three college students um, uh, working uh, 40 hours each clearing invasives, which is largely Uwanimus, Barberry, Multiflora Rose, and First and foremost, I had them go after the plume of garlic mustard that has uh, shown up. So clearing invasives, if you're not going to use chemistry, is a very hands-on activity and one that you have to work at a lot. So uh, I'm very pleased that, that that's uh, up and running. And it should be visible to visitors, but that park greens up so quickly in, this, in the spring and summer that sometimes you can't even uh, uh, tell. But the trails have been worked on. Uh, and um, we're making nice progress there. If you I, walk, is, the is it ahead. possible? Is it possible to scroll the um, agenda down because we're now on beyond what's showing? Oh yeah, you should be on point four. There we go, right there. There's all the information. Thank you. Um, if you walk the trails today, the main trail, you'll notice a lot of trees have been marked for removal. Those are only along the main Green Link Trail where uh, uh, some of the grading requires us to take down some trees. Um, I believe there are something like uh, nine trees slated, two large trees, one tulip and one Norway maple. But at the same time, the plan also calls for 30 trees to be planted. 
So we're managing the balance sheet on some trees have to come down, but other trees go up. Uh, and the trees we're putting in are going to be more native. So we're going to be eliminating six or seven Norway maples, but bringing in uh, three or four varieties of oak and other more um, supportive uh, trees. So uh, you may hear that or you may see someone may say something to you, but that's where the program is. And uh, that would be the very first level of activity um, once we get the approval that, that those tree, the tree removal program would start. Um, we've collected over $250 in the seed uh, money donation box, which is pretty great. Uh, people are just putting in dollars. Somebody put in 50, somebody put in 20. So people sort of are buying into, hey, it's nice to feed the birds. Uh, good news is that we received a small grant from the New Canaan Community Foundation uh, to work on the bridge that will connect the main trail to the pond sitting area. Um, we also have the Exchange Club, uh, a grant request with them pending, and Susan Schweitzer has worked on several more uh, grant requests. So uh, we're, we're working on the uh, private funding, or I don't even know what they call it, private, not-for-profit or quasi-private funding uh, to enhance whatever we get through the town. Um, another nice piece of news is that uh, a local landscaper who's undertaking a big project at Waveney has offered uh, the town uh, uh, to undertake the planting of a thousand native plants. And uh, one of the host sites for that planting could be Bristow. So um, I'm hopeful that uh, uh, we may see uh, uh, a nice uh, uh, effort at improving the native plant population of the park. And then um, for uh, the two commissioners, um, one thing I'd like to uh, get your support on is we have very little budget left at this point from the, from the current fiscal year. It's something just over, uh, uh, I think, uh, just around 2000 I'd like to allocate $1,000 to Patrick Cummings, who is the head of Connecticut Audubon, to become our birding advisor for Bristow Park. Um, it is, uh, birding is not, is an interest of mine, but not a profession. Uh, Patrick has been a very senior member of National Audubon, uh, Audubon, Connecticut, and Connecticut Audubon, where he is now. Um, if you'd like, I'd like to get Do you your, need a motion? Do you need a motion? I would need that? a motion to approve that, and then I would have to set it up. So, Does, does that actually fall within, I mean, I'm, I'm sympathetic to it, but I wonder, does that fall within our charge for the things we're allowed to spend money on? Well, I, I think that we have a budget. So I'm, I'm spending money for Keith Simpson to do landscape design. Mm -hmm. um, I'm spending money on some tree work, you know, to have an arborist uh, improve uh, uh, the big oak tree. And I felt it's probably not a bad idea to spend a little money. And so with this $1,000, uh, Patrick Cummings would come visit us two or three times a year or for two or three visits and help us on... Uh, habitat management, but bird house management, bird feeder, uh, and bird food uh, management. And also, you know, potentially, you know, uh, we would then potentially fall within the Audubon umbrella, which is a good way to get birders and people who are interested in birding to our park. So um, I think I believe it's it absolutely necessary if we're going to if we're creating a bird sanctuary or you know and feeding birds and and and, and the interest in the habitats so i think we need to have experts yeah otherwise it's you know, what if you had built a bird sanctuary and nobody came well there's that there's that and they did and the birds didn't come i mean well, the birds and, right right the birds. <laughs> because um uh, patrick also runs the second oldest bird sanctuary in the nation which is in oh. fairfield Oh, well, that was he's qualified. <laughs> yeah, he's qualified. So with your, uh, uh, so can I get a motion to um, allocate $1,000 to uh, Audubon, Connecticut Audubon and Mr. Patrick Cummings to act as the Bristow Audubon advisor? So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Thank you. Can uh, I jump in again? Yes. Um, when Patrick comes to uh, to visit and you know give us an initial audit kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, can you make that so that some of us can uh, show up too? Because be very interested to hear what he has to say and uh, get a little education. Absolutely, it's a deal. And I think I'll make it a, an announcement that you know he probably will take a walking tour, and it would be great to have a couple of people walking alongside him or you know at distance to do it so absolutely sven thank you and i'm sure he'd be happy to do it um and this uh um that completes uh any points on bristow i don't know if anyone else has any questions or comments i do appreciate having three uh town council members on the call and hearing the story I want to assure you we're in good shape and I also believe very strongly that once this first round is approved, um, several foundations will, will see that the town is, is serious about doing this and they will also step up and support what we're doing. So I'm hopeful that uh, uh, we get to this uh, uh, approval and then um, we can then go out and uh, talk to some of these larger uh, organizations and see if they're um, uh, happy to come on board. That's, uh, that's my final on that one. Any other, any other comments or questions regarding Bristow? Okay, last point on the open space report. Uh, we know that this year there was no funding for the land acquisition fund. Um, I think we have to work on uh, improving <laughs> the importance of why we want those monies there and build that argument. And part of that will be updating the uh, open space map uh, uh, for the town of New Canaan. And I'm, I'm pleased to report as the ex officio member of the land trust that they have had a third round of Yale students working on the mapping and now have uh, prioritized 150 uh, parcels uh, of which uh, have a higher quotient interest uh, uh, for open space preservation. So uh, we might be able to prioritize a little more successfully and tell a stronger story of the importance for open space. Um, that concludes the uh, uh, fixed agenda point. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I now open the floor for any new business or comments. I have no new business. Okay. Um, I, I have uh, no new business at this moment either that I want to bring up, but I do want to just remind us that uh, we want to support Sustainable Connecticut and we do want to support Pollinator Pathway. And it is my hope that once we launch, and, and river testing, once we launch uh, the program to get Bristol underway, that we kind of turn our focus in that direction. So, and balance our, you know, broader mission out. Sounds good. With I, that said, I move to adjourn the meeting at uh, 7.03. I second. I, I, <laughs> quick, uh, yeah, quick, quick update there. I just, I, you know, the minutes we approved from uh, May. Yes. This is a huge, huge correction. I noticed that Marty's <laughs> last name was misspelled. So, Again. So. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks, Thank Chris. You. Nice Thank job. You. Thanks for keeping it rolling. Thanks, Robin. See you on Wednesday, Liz. And Thank thanks, you. Tom, as always, for taking care of us and making Mr. sure we Stadler, get the meetings Thank going. Thank you. And I, I know Tom Stadler does it because this is the most interesting commission he gets to sit in and listen. <laughs> <laughs> and, it really and it's is. because he loves turkeys. It's because he loves turkeys. <laughs> and that's what we are. That's good night, folks. All right, good night, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Linda. See you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Tom. Bye-bye.